hello my friend. Uh, how are you? Welcome to the Thank you. Thank you. So the ocean uh, obviously is very important to life uh, on the planet Earth as we know it. Uh, uh, it absorbs carbon dioxide uh, and, and turns it into oxygen so people can uh, breathe it. And at the same time, of course, it's uh, uh, everybody depends uh, on the marine and fisheries life on the ocean. So. Um, Island people, especially, who are surrounded by the ocean, uh, have for centuries appreciated what the ocean means uh, as uh, a way to not only uh, sustain our culture as island people, but it sustains uh, our economies uh, through tourism and other uh, economic activities. And it also ensures food security for us. But our contribution, the contribution of the ocean to the whole humankind is irreplaceable and that's why it's important that we take care of the ocean. So for small island developing states uh, like Palau and, and other small island states, um, the, um, the adoption of the sustainable development goals will go a long way to ensuring our sustainability as a people and as, uh, uh, and as islanders. Uh, so we, we treasure very much what the, uh, what the international community has done by coming together and recognizing that um, there are those uh, members of the international community that are already living on the front end of the impact of climate change and global warming and all the, uh, the social uh, challenges that uh, societies are now becoming to realize. Uh, um, living on the front end of these impacts uh, uh, can mean life and death. It can mean uh, the future of, of our island countries. So it's important, uh, first of all, that, and we are very grateful that the nations have adopted the uh, 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, but we know that at the heart of these 17, uh, a lot of the uh, related goals on, on health, on hunger, on uh, climate change, on, on, on all these uh, are all related to the condition of the ocean. How do we address ocean? How do we address climate change? Uh, that's why it's important for, uh, for partnerships to happen because we're not small, we're also vulnerable, and we have limited resources to address this. Um, one typhoon or one storm can destroy us and bring, back, uh, bring us back 10 or 20 years of investments that we did in our infrastructure and in our, our developments. Uh, so we must make sure that uh, we, are, uh, we have the mitigation and we have the adaptation uh, measures in place to better prepare ourselves and to better adjust to the unfortunate realities of the times. Well, uh, of course, I would begin by encouraging uh, all uh, countries to ratify the uh, port state measures because it's a very uh, practical and important uh, way to address uh, sustainability of ocean resources. Uh, the sad part uh, in, uh, of the reality is that these IUU activities, the illegal, uh, unreported uh, activities are just destroying and exploiting the, uh, the resources, especially the fish population of the ocean, through whatever methods out there. So, futures of island nations like Palau uh, that depends so much on the uh, healthy condition and the sustainable harvesting of the re ocean resources. Uh, we, we need the port state measures to uh, ensure that, uh, you know, proper management, proper enforcement uh, is there to combat uh, these IUU activities. And FAO has been an important uh, 
um, initiator and a partner in, in, in this regard. So we are also, besides, of course, the port state measure and the IUU, uh, we, we see the value of uh, marine protected areas for Palau. Uh, conservation has to be a part of sustainable uh, future. Um, you, you, you don't just harvest and harvest, you also need to, to breathe and, and re, repopulate and re, regenerate uh, what's out there. And one way of doing that is to make sure that the, uh, all countries also set aside some um, protected areas for them so that uh, we can sort of help to balance the, um, the harvesting uh, uh, that's happening right now and making sure that there's a sustainable uh, ocean population to, to help uh, you know, the future uh, supply of uh, of fish and other marine life. It's all about uh, partnerships, that's for sure. Uh, I, I think the, um, the, really, the implementation of uh, all these uh, programs uh, to address the challenges by seeds uh, is that we cannot do, do it alone or on our own. So more and more it's uh, agencies like FAO or bilateral or multilateral uh, partnerships that, uh, we'll have to be there uh, for us to work together. And uh, uh, in this regard, uh, what came out of the uh, Paris Agreement uh, and um, it is important that we continue to uh, have the developed countries and, uh, be up, work with the developing countries and the least development countries to ensure that the SDGs, uh, all 17 of them, are being able to be tackled and addressed uh, properly. So, first of all, we're we're very happy about the reforms that have taken place, uh, reforms that have uh, make make it possible for small island countries to become uh, not only members but uh, for the focus of FAO agenda to also realize that there are vulnerable small island countries uh, that needs help in food security also. So uh, we're very encouraged by uh, the, the uh, Director General's uh, agenda uh, to work with small island nations. Uh, um, already there are uh, discussions in the works, uh, not only with port state measures, but uh, other areas like invasive species or aquaculture programs that uh, would go a long way to ensuring that indeed uh, there is uh, food security and a sustainable future for island people. We hope the uh, more Pacific island countries uh, become uh, accredited partners of uh, FAO and that we would have more representative uh, of Pacific islands in the council because uh, the whole Pacific islands, is, there's a north and a south, uh, so we're not all from the South Pacific. There's uh, uh, areas in the north, uh, and I, I think that would just make for an effective communication and effective implementation of the uh, partnerships that required.